You and me, we're the good guys. But unfortunately, the wider world is full of truly awful people too. I'm talking despicable litterers, attention-seeking pranksters, and even kidnappers. Yikes. Well, it's time someone stood up for the little guy and called these people out. So let's crack open a can of whoop-ass on some of the worst people who got embarrassingly exposed. Deep and Meaningful Contradiction They say money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you a bunch of half-brained influencers to convince their impressionable fans that your corrupt company is actually super wholesome. Enter Danny DMC. She was one of six influencers invited on an all-expenses-paid trip to a warehouse owned by Chinese fast fashion brand Shein. Danny featured heavily in a little promo video about how clean the warehouse is, and how advanced the technology was, and, oh my god, how nice it must be to work here. Except, it's well documented that workers for Shine's warehouse are stuck in some of the worst conditions imaginable. The list of accusations against that company is almost endless. Exploitative labor, forcing staff to work 18-hour days, sweatshop conditions, intellectual property theft, major environmental damage, yada yada. Basically, they suck. And everyone and their blind grandmothers could see through Sheehan's thinly veiled PR stunt. Everyone other than Danny, that is. I mean, the video script sounds like it was written by that kid from kindergarten who ate glue sticks. There's a narrative fed to us in the U.S., and I'm one that always likes to be open-minded and seek the truth, so I'm grateful for that about myself, and I hope the same for you guys. My name's Danny DMC. There's a narrative fed to us in the U.S., and I'm open-minded. So the promo vid got torn to shreds, but Danny only doubled down in defending Sheehan. Apparently, she had more awareness than anyone else of what was going on behind the scenes. And if you thought she was spreading propaganda, then it was your fault. Good God. How embarrassing. Hey, everyone has a price, it seems. However, to condone human rights atrocities, most of us would charge more than a return trip to a Chinese warehouse. Eventually, Danny confessed to her mistakes, but in a let-me-give-you-my-life-story so you can see how hard I've had it kind of way. Yeah, it's a little first world problems -y. I can't comment on what personal hardships Danny's endured. I don't know her, but giving the I'm human, I make mistakes jargon when your mistake was shilling out for a company that borderline enslaves its employees is uh, pitiful. Two-Wheeled Terror Across every great city in the world, a major battle is being fought between two warring factions. It's been tough, and many tears have been shed, but cyclists and motorists just can't get along. One brave soldier, Cycling Mikey, fights in his own special way. He polices a busy intersection outside of London's Regent's Park. Here we go. Let him finish. Often, drivers making a right turn will deliberately drive the wrong way down the street to skip the queue. However, this recklessly endangers anyone using the road correctly, so our boy Mikey here stands defiantly in the way and sends them back. Because of this, people have affectionately named the spot Gandalf's Corner. Is it petty? Sure. But someone could get seriously hurt, and the driver's reactions are priceless. Check out what these people in the car say. No, you go back. You can't be breaking the law like this. Okay, okay. You know I'm going to put this to the police. That's fine, you do. I'm going to take a picture of you and I'm going to talk to my patients about what we're going to say while we're late. Yeah, maybe back. you should have left home earlier. Oh, they're, they're doctors. Well, my apologies, ma'am. The laws of the road clearly don't apply to you, idiots. Dr. Karen MD here proceeds to cry, moan, take photos, and complain about how threatened she feels all while failing to acknowledge she's in the wrong. 
This fellow cyclist sums it all up pretty well. You're completely on the wrong side of the road. You why? You... Jesus Christ, you know some Thank of you us guys. should do something that's worthwhile for living instead of sitting here. Like drive a 4x4 four 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 around London. Enjoy the traffic. After way too long, the delinquent doctors pull back and join the queue. Ah, feels good. But like some multi-headed four-wheeled hydra, there's always another angry head to replace the ones you've quelled. This next lady gets out of her car and right up in Mikey's face. Okay, if you can stop someone to let me in front, I'll pull back. No. Exactly, so what do you want me to do? What is it? What are you expecting You're going back and you're going in that queue. Which queue? How? Are you going to help me drive the car? No. Are you going to drive the car? Haven't you got a driving license? Are you going to drive the car? No, why should I drive your car? I'm not insured. No. Jeez, I'm not sure this lady should ever be trusted behind the wheel. She keeps asking if he's going to help her drive it. Go Are you going to help me drive the car? Why do I need to help you? Are you incompetent? Who, would you I mean, we already know you're, you're an incompetent driver because right? you what ignored you the keyboard. You tell her, Mikey. She's such an incompetent driver that she leaves her car in the middle of the road and walks off. Huh. When she returns, her attitude goes from bad to downright awful. You back off. I'm a woman. You've come and approached me. You're threatening you're me. You're coming to you're me. You're scaring me. You're I'm here scaring you. You're here in the scene traffic because of what? Who made you the highway patrol? Who made you the He's scaring you? How dare you? Get out of my face. Are you mad? Take the car key. Get out of my face. Take the car key. I want you Get to out touch of my face. me. Touch me. Do something to Walk me. Walk into me. Do something to me. Yuck. What a horrible person. Despite all her yapping, though, Mikey does eventually get his way, and he even sticks up for her as she's driving off. Oh, no, no, let's not be too harsh on her. She could be a decent person. Let's be fair, right? Now that, dear viewers, is a sign of a true gentleman. Not all heroes wear capes. Some wear spandex, helmets, and those little shoes that clip into pedals. I've heard other heroes are small, soft, white, and pudgy, and make awesome fact videos. <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> oh, stop. I'm blushing. Okay, well, you're not going to let your hero go without a little like and subscribe now, are you? Gee, thanks. Let's get back to the video. Shoo! Twist, lick, stick. I love making videos for you all. It's one of the greatest joys in my life. However, I've got beef with certain fellow creators, and it's time someone said something. <clears throat> YouTube pranksters, nobody likes you. There, I said it. Prank channels suck. And one of the worst I've come across is Reset. This Spanish prankster, whose real name is Kangua Ren, makes really uh, thought-provoking videos with titles like Making a Homeless Man Eat Oreos Filled with Toothpaste. Yeah, you heard right. What a jerk. In 2019, Ren, who was 19 at the time, filled himself scooping out the filling of an Oreo, replacing it with toothpaste, and then approaching a homeless man on the streets of Barcelona. Ren offered the man 20 euros, roughly 20 bucks, and the cookie, which he gratefully accepted. What happened next was just too horrible for me to show you here without getting demonetized. But here's the gist. He walked a short distance away and filmed him eating an Oreo. The poor guy's reaction quickly went from thankful to shocked. The tainted cookie was so gross it made him throw up. Oh man. Now if you're thinking, come on, Ren's 19, maybe it was an error of judgment. Nuh uh When asked about the prank, Bren said, Look on the bright side. This helped him clean his teeth. What an insufferable D-bag. Bren got 15 months in prison and was banned from making content for five years. Hey, good riddance. And he had to pay the guy a little over $21,000 in compensation. Nice. Shockingly, this wasn't even the first time Reset had tried feeding something disgusting to an innocent or vulnerable person. During his prosecution, it was revealed that in another video, he went around giving out free sandwiches to the elderly and kids, but the sandwiches were filled with cat poop. What kind of sick freak gives that to a child? I hope this piece of garbage never comes back to this platform again. It's awful. I love being an American, but it's about time we address the hurt we've caused in the world. Undoubtedly, our greatest blight is the gender reveal party. If I see one more stupid, colorful, cake-cutting, or balloon-bursting video, I'm throwing hands. Y'all take it too damn far. At a gender reveal party in 2020, 
A couple from Yucaipa, California, set off a smoke bomb near dry grass, which caused a devastating 22,000-acre wildfire. That's terrible enough on its own, but in trying to tackle the blaze, one of the firefighters ended up losing his life. Oh man. As I'm making this video, the couple faces 30 charges, including manslaughter. And that's not just a one-off. In 2017, two ingenious parents-to-be decided to announce the gender of their child by shooting an improvised explosive target in a sawmill. A freaking sawmill. There'd have been wood shavings everywhere. The shot was fired by U.S. Border Patrol agent Dennis Dickey, and the resulting explosion started a wildfire that scorched its way across almost 47,000 acres of Arizona, causing over $8 million in damages. Crikey. Dickey was given five years parole and forced to pay an eye-watering $220,000 fine. Like all great plagues, though, gender reveal parties have spread to other countries, too. In 2022, a Brazilian couple found themselves in hot water after they made the totally selfless decision to dye a waterfall blue for their gender reveal. Man, I wish I was lying. The party took place at the Caimapé River waterfall in Mato Grosso, Brazil, an area that has long struggled with droughts. So, for remote settlements, the waterfall could be their only access to drinking water. Imagine how they'd feel going to collect water and seeing it been rendered as drinkable as poison. In the since-deleted video, the couple set off a blue smoke canister. Sure, why stop at polluting the water? Why not choke up the air, too? I know, let's cover all the elements by burying radioactive metals to poison the soil and setting fire to it to appear. Obviously, I'm kidding, don't ever do that. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me. Look, I'm not trying to rain on the happiest day of new parents' lives. Enjoy it. But why do you have to enjoy it at the expense of everyone else? I'm sure these people didn't mean for everything bad to happen. But if they stopped being all me, me, me for a split second, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Fly tippers. Do you know what I can't stand? Litter bugs. It's not someone else's responsibility to clean up after you. Didn't your mama teach your lazy ass to use the garbage bin? Pathetic. Sadly, some people don't care where they dump their crap. Over in the New Forest National Park in England, two laborers were throwing debris from a job they'd done onto the side of the road by somebody's gate. Unfortunately for them, the lady who owned the gate caught them in the act. Not that that stopped them from coming up with the lame excuse. Yeah, no, so we saw that back of the van. What it is, is we've just picked up some stuff. Right. And it was all mixed up, so we got okay. to sort out before we tip love. Ha, <laughs> the audacity. But the landowner wasn't having any of it. Absolutely. And when I put the bags down, I didn't expect the bags to split. Oh, right. Did you expect that rubbish to jump the gate then? Ooh, savage burn. Yep, our hero stood there and forced this crooked uncle and his SoundCloud rapper apprentice to tidy up all the mess they'd made, even if it meant putting themselves in rather embarrassing positions. Huh, honestly, hearing them clean up their waste is like ASMR to me. Listen. Nah, the relaxing sounds of two bozos fretfully embarrassed. Is anything better? Seriously, though, screw old Ben Jenkins and Post Malonely over there. This gate is used to bring animals through, and all the sharp bits of debris they left lying around could have seriously hurt them. What a bunch of turds. Jessica Fernandez. 998. 999. 1000. Woo! I just finished my daily pull-ups. That's right, your boy goes gym. That's my safe space. Sadly, gyms aren't always the safest places for women. There are plenty of creeps out there. Indeed, when Twitch streamer Jessica Fernandez was at her local gym, she started secretly filming a guy she claimed was staring at her. Only one problem, my man was just minding his own business. Still, that didn't stop Fernandez from publishing a TikTok accusing him of being feral, a weirdo, a creep, and even fantasizing about doing horrific things to him. Halfway through the video, the man sees Fernandez struggling to load a plate onto a barbell and offers to help. 
She refuses his help, and he walks away, no questions asked. But when Fernandez uploaded the video to TikTok, she framed the whole thing as him trying to get a closer look at her. She must have been expecting all her fans to swarm in support against this horrible man, except they didn't. Instead, she got taken to the cleaners for playing the victim and delegitimizing the struggles of women who face actual harassment in public spaces. See, disingenuous videos like this make it harder for the real ones to be taken seriously. And for what? Some social media likes? Grow up. Fernandez did apologize for the video and quickly tried to delete it, but by that point, it had already gone viral. Whoopsie. I guess that's a lesson she learned the hard way. Hopefully she thinks twice before dragging innocent people's names through the dirt for clout again. Scratch that. Look, I've made myself pretty clear that I don't like pranksters, but there's one type that really gives me the red mist. I'm talking about people who prank fast food workers. Working at a drive through is a miserable job at the best of times, so exploiting these underpaid, overworked staff who don't have any choice but to feature in your stupid jokes is just lame. Which is exactly how I describe this next driver. He's modified his car with an extra loud horn and pulled up to the golden arches ready to blast it right in the worker's face. Because that's hilarious, right? Well, not in my eyes. Or, it turns out, the service workers. <laughs> Boom! Take that, you schmuck. I've heard of having egg on your face, but somehow sitting in a puddle of Diet Coke sounds way worse. If anything, though, I don't think the fast food worker went far enough. I'd have done something really petty, like this. When this Tesla owner walked up to their car outside of the South Bay Center in Dorchester, Massachusetts, they found a huge scratch down the side of it. Huh? Well, I guess the perpetrator wasn't aware that the sentry mode settings caught him red-handed. What a doofus. I couldn't find any follow-up, but he probably got caught and fined, or even worse. Obviously, I was kidding about doing it to the prankster's cars. But geez, whatever happened to treating each other nicely? False Prophet We all get a little down in the dumps. It's normal. In your vulnerable state, you might have stumbled across the world of online motivational speakers. You know who I mean? The crying in my Lamborghini because my dad never loved me life advice guys. Yeah, they suck. Don't believe me? Huh, brace yourself. Online entrepreneur, motivational speaker, and big hustler Herman Loera MX was just that kind of guy. In fact, his success led to him speaking at the Youth Leaders for Peace Congress in Mexico City in 2017. Must be a pretty clever guy then, right? Well, this Instagram caption, philosophers, a powerful proclamation include, You are not the future. You are the present. Live and act like it. The mind is the only thing that limits us. And my personal favorite, traveling is extremely important for an entrepreneur. Deep. Well, Herman can enjoy traveling 15 feet around his cell after he got sent down for 50 years for his part in kidnapping a woman. Uh, what? Okay, he didn't do the actual kidnapping, but he was the ringleader. Back in February 2018, Herman hired five men to kidnap a 33-year-old lawyer. Then he rented an apartment in Chihuahua, Mexico, where he knowingly allowed them to hide out and hold the innocent woman captive. Yikes. The gang of six demanded 2 million pesos in Bitcoin, or $80,500 for her safe release. However, thankfully, police intercepted their messages and were able to raid the apartment and free the victim. Woo! Herman and co. were caught in a second raid on a nearby property, and every one of them was sentenced to 50 years in prison and ordered to pay $25,000 to the victim. Hmm. I think Herman's going to have a tough time inspiring folk from the slammer. Hey, at least he got a lot of thinking time. Just a plank, bro. We interrupt this video to bring you yet another YouTube prankster getting served a slice of humble pie. This time, it's Seth Merring's turn. This waste of oxygen went to the beach and turned heads by hitting on girls right in front of their partners. Hilarious. However, the internet's most irrelevant jester had picked a fight with the wrong guy. You're bothering people. Why? 
Why? Yeah. You want us to call the cops? For what? You're harassing people. Was it because of my shirt? No, dude, get out of here. Keep hey, hey you, you can't, you can't. The peeved beachgoer ends up snagging the microphone off Seth's camera and launching it into the sea. Good riddance. Ugh. Can this guy get any more annoying? Well, it turns out, Mr. Joke Cracker wasn't so good at being the butt of the joke. After having a little cry to the camera about how it's so unfair, it's just a prank, bro, why you gotta get so bad? Seth goes full snitch and calls the police, accusing the man of damaging his property. You're kidding. Seriously, how pathetic is this guy? He wants to pick a fight, then he hides behind law enforcement when things get ugly. Well, the authorities came and Seth gave them his side of the story, only for them to pretty much laugh him off the beach. I mean, come on, what did you expect? I was just making a silly video and he asked me to stop and I didn't. And then he he got mad and he broke, he broke my camera. And now I can't be annoying people anymore. What a baby. Beach cleanup. Whenever I go to the beach, I always try to pick up five pieces of trash. If everyone did the same, we wouldn't have to worry about so much plastic lining our shores. But when this unnamed influencer duo was secretly filmed picking up garbage on a beach, it didn't end how you'd expect. In this video shared online, the cleanup creators do some silly TikTok dance moves before hauling the cumbersome trash bags. Oh boy, that looks heavy. And then they, uh, they just walk off. Wait, wait, what are the, where are you going? Hey, lady, you forgot to take the trash. Uh, guys, I, I don't think they ever actually meant to clean up the beach. As I said, no one knows who these people are or where it went down, and it's probably for the best. And these two are being torn to shreds in the comments. I get it. It's some lame-ass virtue-signaling influencer nonsense. Posing for a cause you know people care about just to get views is the definition of deplorable. Sadly, it seems like the only trash that left the beach that day was these two pieces of garbage when they went home. Boom! How do you like that? Who else wants some, huh? Random Act of Rejection I try to do something good every day. You know, love thy neighbor and all that. But when UK TikToker Millie G. Fit tried helping a stranger beat the hump day blues, her plan embarrassingly backfired. She walked into her local grocery store in the hopes of paying for a stranger's groceries. Excuse me, this may be really random, but I'd love to pay for your food shop today. Just because I want to... No, 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 honestly, like, I, I, do, I do this thing where I want to do something nice. Every... Okay, well, that didn't work. Several more rejections later, Millie gave it one last shot. There's a lot more deserving people in here than that, thank you. I'm, I'm sure you've done some good in the world. Okay. Ah, nobody was interested. Feeling pretty silly about the whole thing, Millie gave up and donated a load of food to the store's food bank instead. Nice, but I know what you're thinking. How can someone trying to help people ever be a bad thing? Well, to be clear, I don't think Millie's a bad person at all. I reckon she's actually really caring and means well, mostly. But did she really need to film this entire escapade? A good deed is still a good deed, even if you don't film it, upload it, and ultimately get paid for it. In fact, especially if you don't do those things. See, by making content showing off how great of a person you are, it comes across more, look how nice I am, instead of, I did a nice thing. It's disingenuous. And to top it all off, Millie concluded the video with a little cry. I did it. Tears. <laughs> Just a lot of emotion. <sighs> I'm sorry, but that's just cringe. Way to go and make it all about yourself, Millie. And listen, I'm not hating. Millie did do a good thing, but you should do it because you want to, not to try and make everyone else like you. Influencers in the wild. Sadly, we live in an age where people will do anything for their social media accounts to blow up. But some people, like streamer Trevon Sellers, take it further than most. He sparked big backlash on social media for filming himself offering to buy a homeless guy lunch. Then, well, see for yourself. So I, I want to make sure you get on the right path. And, you know, you're always able to, you know, get back on your feet. You know, so I, just, I want you to enjoy this. Okay. 
What? I mean, filming yourself buying food for people is questionable enough. We've established that. But then not actually giving them the food is way, way worse. And if they're homeless? Well, that's just pure evil. Some people have said Travon could have faked the video and the guy wasn't really homeless. But even if that's true, it still doesn't make it okay. Is that the kind of behavior you want promoting to an audience of young, impressionable people? It's plain wrong. Seriously, sitting inside a McDonald's, looking out the window and seeing that, I'd be furious. The only time I'd be more annoyed is if I looked out the window while on an airplane and saw this. Is she sitting in the engine? There's no way that can be safe, right? She's going to hold up the entire runway for the day. Well, fret not. There's no chance this plane is actually on. For once, this person isn't doing something as terrible as it looks. It's actually a bit of rite of passage for many cabin crew or pilots when they fly. Woo! I was worried that my one-way trip to the Maldives was about to get cancelled. Pop the Prankster Oh, look at what we got here. It's Tanner Cook, another dumb YouTube prankster. Tanner's contributions to the world of entertainment include fake vomiting on Uber drivers, peeing in stores prank, and stealing people's groceries. If you think Tanner sounds like an intolerable public menace, you'd be right. Whilst filming one of his so-called pranks around a shopping mall in Washington, Tanner rubbed an unsuspecting member of the public the wrong way. He chased the man, called Alan Coley, around the food court incessantly while loudly playing an offensive message to him. Coley asked him to stop no less than three times. Then, when Tanner ignored him and continued the harassment, Coley pulled out a firearm and, uh, taught him a lesson. Jeez. Not to worry, minus a few holes he didn't have that morning, Tanner was fine. Now, call me callous, but I don't blame Collie. And neither did the jury who found him not guilty. Tanner acted like a bully, the bully got got. The wildest thing is, even Tanner's fans say the same thing. Picture Tanner lying in hospital. Oof. Ah, still hurts. Just gotta check my YouTube comments and see what supportive messages my adoring fans have sent me. Oh, here's one. Getting shot is proof that your pranks aren't staged. Well, okay, I'm sure the others are nice. You getting shot is more entertaining than your content. Jeepers. Okay, one more. I feel sorry for Alan Coley that he has to go through this. Ouch. Uh, no taking joy from this is wrong. Tanner could have been seriously injured. But how bad of a person do you have to be for your own fans to say you deserved it? And just like that, we've reached the end of the video. Which of these horrific humans riled you up the most? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, thanks for watching.